our bodies are kind of hardwired to look for problems. And when we have problems, they are hardwired to give us a fight, flight, or freeze response. And that I like to think of as an adrenaline response. And certainly there are many aspects of what we're hearing in the news today, any one of which is enough to kind of stimulate that adrenaline response. And luckily for us, there are four ways to manually override the adrenaline response. And so I'm just gonna list them out um, briefly and then I'll talk about each one. One is um, your body, the physical, um, the physical um, position of your body and muscle tension specifically. The second one is eye gaze, how focused or unfocused your eyes are. The third one is your um, breathing. And this is very, very important. And the fourth one is your beliefs or the story that you are telling yourself about what's happening. So these four things, luckily, even though we are hardwired for them to just explode with um, the outpouring of adrenaline in response to stress and also other stress hormones like cortisol, which have all kinds of negative effects on our health when they happen too frequently. And they are happening frequently right now for lots of us. So the good news is that there is a manual override for, for those four things. So um, just to start with, I'd like to talk about um, your body. In hypnosis, what we typically do um, is we help people go into hypnosis partly by physical relaxation, because physical relaxation is a really good way to turn down that um, stress response. So if you are jacked up on adrenaline, you're going to be tense. This is kind of, um, you can imagine um, the person um, uh, hundreds of years ago, or thousands of years ago in the jungle and they are either going to catch some prey for dinner or they are going to be prey from some other um, larger um, predator. So that's just a good um, baseline with which to think about this adrenaline response. So that person is crouched and tense. Their muscles are tense. So to back end that part of the adrenaline response, we need physical relaxation, very systematic muscle relaxation. The other thing that's happening with that person who's either about to become predator or prey is that their eyes are going to be very sharply focused on what they're looking for, very sharply focused. So we can actually back end that through an exercise I call peripheral vision, which I learned from Melissa Tears, who's a very well-known um, uh, hyp hypnotherapist in New York. And in this, in this situation with peripheral vision, we are softening the gaze, we are expanding our awareness, we still are looking at a particular point, but we are not um, looking only at that. It's not that tunnel vision, laser point focus that you see when someone's in the fight, flight, or freeze mode, that adrenaline response. So there's a way to turn that off manually, which I generally teach to all my clients because even before um, the pandemic, Pretty much everyone who came to see me in the hypnosis office was seeing me for something and anxiety and a stress response that often felt like it was just coming out of nowhere and was out of their control. Um, so the third way that we can get that stress response under control is by our breathing. That person in the jungle, predator or prey, they are not taking big, deep breaths. They are taking shallow, rapid breaths. They are tense. They are breathing in the upper part of their lungs. They are not really getting their breath in and out. So slow, deep breathing is a good way to um, manually override that, that uh, stress response. And the fourth thing, and really the most important one of these, is your beliefs, the story you tell yourself about what's happening. Because there are a number of different ways to tell yourself the story of what's happening in the pandemic and how it's affecting you in your life. And just in life in general, there's more than one way to look at things. And sometimes we have a reaction to a situation 
that is based on mistaken beliefs about ourselves. And these mistaken beliefs are generally taken on before you even have conscious awareness of yourself as a separate person. And also, a lot of times, the beliefs we have about what's happening around us are based on a set of um, self-limiting thoughts. You know, things like, we're not good enough, we are not capable to meet this challenge, we were never good at that, nobody in our family's good at that, we can't do it, we don't want to do it, people who do that have blah, 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 whatever. So having, um, having limiting beliefs and mistaken perceptions in your subconscious mind will have a big effect on how you respond to stress. So learning to uncover those and have more self-awareness of those, have some insight into how you feel really deep on the inside can have a huge difference in how you respond to any kind of a crisis. Once you have an awareness of why you are thinking about something in a certain way, then you have a choice about how to change it or if to change it. So these things um, are very important aspects of manually overriding that you know, automatic stress response, that adrenaline response. And then there is Another concept that I usually introduce people to in hypnosis, but I can tell you the idea of it here and you can um, probably understand the value of this on a cognitive basis from your conscious frontal lobe. And that is that in all of us, and this is not to say that we have multiple personality disorders, but in all of us, there's the part that wants to get up early and the part that wants to sleep in. There's the part that wants to eat a second piece of chocolate cake and the part that really wants to look nice in their clothes and feel good physically. So if you can think about this, you can think that in every single person, there is, you could think of them like children in a classroom. There's a lot of different children in the classroom. And there's the, there's the kind of the problem kid who's always creating a ruckus and knocking things over and getting in trouble and bothering other people. There's the person that just wants to be the class clown and have fun. There's a person who's very creative at problem solving. There's a person who really studies and likes to learn new things. And then there's a person who is really calm. And they're the person that no matter what happens, they really understand that they have access to this deep a reserve of resourcefulness within themselves. And so if you think about that, and you have probably many examples from your own life of different times in your life when a different aspect of yourself kind of stepped up to the plate and, and worked on a problem. But the thing about that classroom is only one child can come to the front of the classroom at a time. Only one can be speaking from your mouth. So you can decide in the middle of a crisis if you want to be the person who's crying and worrying or if you wanna be the person who is just acting out and making a lot of noise, or if you want to put in front of the classroom that part of yourself that's resilient, that remembers that you've been through other tough times before, and that part of yourself that is creative at problem solving. So those are just, um, that's just kind of an overview of, um, the sort of thing that I would be looking at to discuss with someone in the hypnosis office. And I want to say that um, the wonderful thing about hypnosis is it is something that happens in a person's subconscious. It's something we do together. I don't do it to somebody. And um, we are right now in our conversational mode on this Zoom call, for example, we are in the beta brainwave state. And this is where most people are most of the day. But throughout the day, and particularly on your way to sleep and on your, 
um, way to wake up in the morning, you pass through other states of consciousness. And the one that's really important to us in um, hypnosis is the alpha state. And that's the state below the beta state where you're a little more relaxed, you have access to your own creativity, you've got more um, easy access to your memories and your feelings about yourself. And in this state, you really can do some deep work. You can do deep work in hypnosis that you can't do in traditional talk therapy. And so um, after being a nurse for 40 years and seeing um, a lot, uh, many, many patients who had um, problems with various types of substance abuse and many patients with chronic pain, I saw that as a nurse, there was very little I could do for them that would really change their lives. And the physicians around me and allied health professionals of all kinds really had very limited um, effect with these patients. So when I found out that hypnosis was so effective for these problems, I quit my nursing job and became a hypnotherapist. And I'm board certified um, and uh, hypnotherapist here in Washington State. Um, I see clients in my office downtown Bellingham and I see clients through Zoom. I'm a best-selling author of two books. One is Migraine Relief with Hypnosis, and the second one, which I'm finishing the edits on right now, is Quit Smoking with Hypnosis Without Gaining Weight. So I hope to um, really meet many of you through um, this program, and thank you so much for the opportunity to tell you a little today.